All right, I do want to at least get a flavor of an infinite probability space. And he, this is a, a simple example, but it's a, it's a very important one. You, you have a Bernoulli trial set up, but now you have more than, one, more than two outcomes. So originally we talked about success and failure, but you can have success, failure, and neither. So you have three outcomes, x1, x2, and x3, <coughs> with probabilities respectively p1, p2, and p3. So the sum of those three is one. And so the idea is that the experiment is repeated until you either get success or failure. And x3 is neither. So if you get x3, 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 x1, then you win. If you get x3, x3, x2, then you lose. If you get x2, you lose. If you get x1, you win. So you repeat it, you repeat it, you repeat it, and you repeat it until you either get a success or a failure. So there's no limit to the number of experiments because you don't know how many of the neithers you're going to get in a row to start with. So the probability of a win is you can win on the first turn. If you win on the first turn, that's P1. But you can win on the second turn. The only way you win on the second turn is if the first one is a neither. So you get a P3 and then a P1. Or you can win on the third turn. And the only way that can happen is that you get a neither on the first two. That's a P3 squared times P1, etc. So this becomes an infinite series. You factor out the P1, and you get P1 times 1 plus P3 plus P3 squared plus P3 cubed, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. That's an infinite geometric series, as you know from our study on generating functions. And the formula for that is first term over 1 minus the ratio. So it's P1 times first term 1 over 1 minus ratio. Ratio is P3. But P1 plus P2 plus P3 is 1. So that 1 minus P1 is just P2, P1 plus P2. It's in the denominator. So you've got P1 over P1 plus P2. It's a very natural formula, but it's kind of interesting that it comes from an infinite series. So if you have a 1 out of 10 chance of winning, and you have a 2 out of 10 chance of failing, and a 7 out of 10 chance of getting neither, your chances of winning in the long run are 1 out of 3. Got it? OK. Let's go back to the first example or one, one of the early examples, Carlos rolls a single fair die. He wins if he run, gets a six. If he doesn't roll a six, then he continues his roll as many times as it takes till he gets a six, and now he loses. Or he rolls the same point as his first roll, in which case he wins. What's the probability that Carlos wins the game? All right, and now as this becomes an infinite series, it's similar to the preceding problem, but not exactly because of this twist about winning becoming a losing. So he can win outright by rolling a six, and that first one six is that. Okay, now he, if he doesn't, the probability that he rolls something else is five out of six. Right, now, he can win on the next roll by repeating his roll, and he has a 1-6 possibility of doing that. But 5-6 of the time times 4-6 of the time, he's going to get a neither. So he won't get a 6, or he won't get his first roll. But then on the next roll, he's got a 1-6 chance. Uh, plus 5-6 times 4-6 six squared, and that's two neithers in a row. And then a 1-6, etc. So now it's a geometric series, but not with the first term. So pull out 
the first term and leave it there, and then it's 5, 6 times a, a 5, 6 times 1, 6 times this, this ge ge geometric series. You do the calculation, and now it turns out to be 7 over 12. So when we first studied this example, and I ask you, was this a fair game? Was Carlos likely to win? And the answer is yes. So if, if you're playing a game and it's one, if your probability is one half, then it's a fair game. If it's more than a half, then it's biased in your favor. Less than a half, it's biased against you. Make sense? Oh, yeah, you have to trust the calculation here, but hopefully I've done it correctly. So 7 out of 12. Okay, now the point is, that if you just observe a game where the probability is 7 out of 12, you might watch it for some time before it begins to occur to you that one of the players seems to be winning. The subtle differences can be hard to detect with small numbers.